Hello everyone, my name is Yule and you are watching You Multicultural's Community Hour. In this segment, we are talking about civic issues in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I would like to introduce our guest, Geraldine Griszczyk. She is a local coordinator of the SHU project in Winnipeg, which helps immigrant and refugee women to improve their communication skills in English to attain their goals in Canada. Hello, Geraldine. Thanks for being here with us today. Hello, Julia. Thank you for having me. So today we are talking about challenges that women face in Canada and how to overcome them through self-confidence and self-love. To begin, we need to let our audience know who you are. So could you please introduce yourself and sure. the show project? Sure. So my name is Geraldine Grustik. I, I am the local coordinator of the show project in Winnipeg. And um, the SHU project is a project that is um, uh, it consists to uh, having 12 newcomers, um, immigrant or refugees. Mm -hmm. And we run a workshop um, with a writing mentor for 10 sessions, mm -hmm. 10 days, uh, three hours each or two, ho two hours and a half. And um, uh, after that, we, we started, although like when they finished that part of the, of the the, the project, they will be able to write 600 words mm -hmm. um, uh, from their own story. Uh, the story that, they, uh, that it brought them to Canada. And, um, and right um, after that, they will be working with a performance coach that uh, they will help the, the women to um, teach them how to perform in an, uh, with an audience, uh, how to move, how do you uh, use your voice. And, um, and at the end of all this work, the, uh, the women will be presenting and performing this in the Manitoba Museum uh, in a big event. Since I participate in this project, it really helps me to step forward and achieve more in my life since I am in this country. And uh, because I came from a very, like from a war-torn country where, and I took it as a great chance. We have many things in common. First of all, we are all immigrants. The SHOE project came about when a private funder who was a reader of fiction, great lover of literature, came to me and said, asked me what I would do if I were provided with some funds to run some kind of project. And I said, I would like to work with immigrant women to help improve their written English so that they could express themselves better in, in our mainstream media and in public. They tend to be silent. Uh, immigrant women tend to take a back seat, even if they're professionals. So this is why here, you know, I started talking in Syria. We were not allowed to talk and say whatever we want. So this is why I was like, OK, I'm in Canada now. I should talk about what's happening, the reality, you know, what's happening back home. This funder, who's Heather Gardner, uh, invited me for dinner, quite coincidentally, with Elizabeth Semelhack, who is the senior curator at the Badashu Museum. And it was Elizabeth who had the bright idea of attaching stories of immigration to shoes. Shoes are the perfect vehicle for that they're common enough objects, they're objects that women take a great interest in, um, but they're not so deeply personal that it's intimidating for a group of strangers to come together and talk about. Bonding through shoes, I think that is what, uh, like we all wear shoes, however we come, like whether you're an immigrant or a refugee. So everyone has shoes, so with that shoe, everyone will have that story. What we're creating here is a, 
a series of 600 word or 800 word personal essays on the theme of a pair of shoes and migration. It's a, it's a form and the women are learning how to work in that form. They are shaping and uh, coming to understand their experience through, you know, creating an artistic form. So every pair of shoes, I believe in that, you, they have a story. You just have to find it. And I think that's what the shoe project does. It helps you to tell that story. But it's a story not just about the shoe, it's a story about yourself. I have witnessed uh, people just really, really come to understand the language by polishing and repolishing sentences. Uh, and it's wonderful to see. I think the most challenging things for me to do is to decide which stories to pick. Because um, we want to choose a good shoes as well. We want to match a good story. And we want to give um, an interesting story and to the audience. Well, the shoe project, it has different elements. So one portion of the project is about writing, the, uh, developing the skills, writing the skills. The other portion of the project is uh, uh, speaking uh, to the public, and I love that part of the, that, that part of the project, just because it seems to me unreal that we can do something like that. It, it is like a dream come true, to be honest. Trying to perfect their their writing in this form is one thing which helps them really get inside the language. But it also is, there is a, an aspect of self-knowledge in it as well. I don't like to stress this, it's not therapy. But on the other hand, uh, immigration is a, a transformative and a traumatic experience. And even through this one vehicle to, to take a position and to define themselves in that way, place themselves here in this language, define an experience is a very powerful thing. One of the differences of the SHOE project to other English language teaching workshops or writing workshops is that it brings uh, senior artists in touch with newcomers. So that part of it began to grow and that's when I brought in Eve Crawford, the voice coach, and asked her to help them uh, project, to help them uh, learn where the emphasis should go in the sentences and really deliver that story. Performing publicly, telling their stories aloud you, first, there's the writing process. That involves some guts and, and revelation, but you're safe here with the paper, you and the paper. But when you get up to tell an audience, what is it? It's up there with the number one fears of mankind is public speaking. To me, working with an experienced uh, coach, voice coach and author was a privilege. I learned a lot uh, how to speak and how to um, emphasize on certain emotions and be strong sometimes and soft sometimes and sad sometimes. I didn't know how to put that into my story. And I think that was powerful. If they can do this, the confidence they take away, I think, is huge. It is one thing to have written a wonderful story, but it's, it's another to be able to put that out in public. I watched one of the performance before joining the group, and I thought, uh, if I will be able to do that, I will be able to do everything in this society. And it really gave me more um, like courage uh, to think seriously 
and to get somewhere in their life and achieve something. I know there must be many artists in Canada who would be really thrilled to share their experience and help devise strategies for newcomers to uh, be heard. And that's where we're going with this. The moment I walked in the performance night, I feel I belong to the bigger family. Um, that's why I decided to join the shoe project. The, the friendship that I have built with the women of uh, the group, I just, that is priceless. It's, I, I really, really enjoyed it and uh, I, I really love those women. It's equally exciting uh, and profound for um, Canadians who don't normally have contact with immigrants to see their faces and hear their voices and understand what they've been through and who they are. And it's often, it's, they very much defy expectations. I recently finished my studies as a paralegal and immigration consultant. And uh, now um, I start my own business. So I want to work in this field and uh, let's see what uh, it led me to. <laughs> Our plan uh, as the SHOE project grows is to use these alumni who are dedicated and have stayed in touch with us as ambassadors. Uh, they will be sent out to the new communities where SHOE projects are being formed to uh, get to know the volunteers there and the newcomers there and to help them shape a project in their own community. So why shoe has become a symbol of the shoe project? Catherine Gauvier, uh, which, like, who is the, the founder, novelist, and board member from the shoe project in Toronto, she has this, this uh, great idea of uh, gathering these newcomer women and um, providing them um, of a workshop where they can speak about their stories. And, uh, and she found uh, also the um, the founder mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the the manager at the Bata Mu uh, Shoe Museum in Toronto uh, provided the uh, the room for these gatherings. So uh, they've been um, uh, after a lot of encounters. They've been you know sharing a lot of emotional and moving stories, and uh, that that's. Uh, Oh, but the condition of um, uh, providing this room from the, from the museum was uh, that they need to talk about shoes somehow. So Catherine, uh, what, what they've been uh, talking about was the shoes that they left behind, mm -hmm. the shoes that they, want, that they uh, helped them to cross the border, and the shoes that they wanted, they dreamed to use for their new life. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how the shoes become like a metaphor uh, from their stories. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So as we can see, the shoe project, it is more than just a writing workshop. It's not, not, not only about learning English. Mm -hmm. It is about healing, self-confidence, self-love. So what sparked the bright idea to assist immigrant and refugee women? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's, well, uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, what I mentioned before about uh, Catherine um, having these meetings with these ladies and uh, the idea of um, may, made her to, to create those workshops because she, she was like uh, seeing that um, a lot of, a lot of uh, all these women that could bring to the Canadian um, um, society was missing because of this, because maybe the lack of language or a language barrier or, you know, so like a lack of confidence as well. Uh, but when, when you are able to uh, 
uh, give this opportunity to these ladies and they will open and they will, you know, they, they uh, like for most of the people or a lot of people think that immigrants just came here to, um, uh, I don't know, do whatever works. But like actually we have a lot of people like with a lot of skills, PhDs, mm -hmm. master degrees, and uh, there is a lot of uh, experience and professionalism that we can have here in Canada. So the, uh, so the shoe project is, uh, the way that I see it, is like a, a little bit of opening this, you know, a door of opportunities uh, for these ladies to kind of do the first step, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And what challenges do women usually face when they come to Canada, mm -hmm. except of unemployment and unknown language? Uh, well, there is a lot, uh, a lot, a lot of different things. Um, uh, there is a language barrier. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, it is because they know a little bit of English. Sometimes they don't even know the language, so they have to start from scratch. Um, another thing that might be a culture shock, mm -hmm. um, people coming from the East, you know, it's very different coming to the Western world. Uh, even people from the Western world, you know, there are things that are different. Um, then uh, the sense of belonging is another important thing Like you, when you leave your country, you you, let, you 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 leave behind your family your friends your uh, known environment and so this is another thing uh, that can you know that is that is a mm -hmm. challenge self self confidence is for sure like a big one and and a lot sometimes is a lot of steps that you have to do in and in order to um, get your certificates again, you know, like from your studies back home uh, here to Canada. Yeah. So these are the things that I think that may. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. So based on your experience, what challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? <laughs> um, well, um, self-confidence is, uh, for me, one of the biggest. Um, yeah, and, the, and the, um, the way that I over, overcame this is by surrounding um, myself with a group of people that is positive, uh, that can push you for the best, like uh, to your best, um, uh, support you no matter what. So I think that like uh, the environment and the people that you are surrounding yourself is, is very important. Um, and uh, just keep going, keep going, try to get as much as workshops and uh, uh, and when you feel that you belong to any organization or a place, um, stay there, stick there, you know, uh, stay there. Mm -hmm. uh, volunteer is a great opportunity to uh, know different things that you can do. Maybe you can discover something that you don't know uh, that you can do and you, maybe you love to do that. Uh, here in Manitoba, there is a lot of opportunities to yes. volunteer. Mm -hmm. So that's, and, and it's uh, also a good way to build a network. So that's the way that I, you know, I, I, I work on, on, on this, my, my self-confidence. And, uh, and also like if you want to explore a little bit of your, yourself, if you want to, you know, do some counseling, for s some period of time to kind of adjust the new place that you are living, why not? Thank you for sharing with You're us welcome. your experience. You're so let's talk about Show Project. 
in late September you started a new course of the shoe project. Mm -hmm. This will be the first mm -hmm. time in the Winnipeg. Yeah. So what are your expectations about that? Um, uh, well, first of all, uh, yes, this is the first time in Winnipeg. And uh, I, I want to mention some organizations okay, that are yeah, part sure. of this. Uh, and I don't want to miss anyone. So, uh, yeah, as we mentioned before, this is the first time in Winnipeg mm -hmm. that we are doing this. Um, the headquarters is in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Winnipeg, the shoe project is uh, hosted by the Ethnocultural Council of Manitoba. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Manitoba Arts Council is uh, providing financial assistance. And there is a very large uh, steering committee um, um, that uh, there is a lot of organizations in Winnipeg uh, that are part of this uh, steering committee. We have Canadian Muslim Women's Institute, the Immigrant Center, Clinic Community Health, Manso Manitoba Association of Newcomers Serving Organizations, uh, Manitoba Museum, mm -hmm. uh, Mosaic Newcomer Family Resource Network, Seven Oaks Immigrant Services, Social Planning Council uh, in Winnipeg, uh, Untold Stories Studios, uh, West Central Women's Resource Center, uh, the City of Winnipeg, and uh, the Winnipeg um, Regional Health Authority. <laughs> And yeah, going back to your question uh, about the expectation is, um, it was very hard to um, do the selection of this candidate, mm -hmm. very hard, um, because all the women uh, that we interview are super interesting. They have their own stories and we want to hear them all. So hopefully we will have a second mm -hmm. uh, shoe project in Winnipeg. Uh, and the expectations of this one is uh, that the women really engage and commit with the, with the, with the work, uh, that they will be able to uh, feel confident, uh, feel free to tell their stories and um, learn um, improve their English and gain new skills for their lives. Can you tell us more about the program, what it consists of? The program of the SHU yes. project? So um, first of all, we have uh, these 10 sessions uh, with the writing mentor. So what, what they are gonna do in these 10 sessions is to uh, write down uh, their stories, uh, how they, they came to Canada, how was your their journey? So, and the writing mentor, uh, what they do, well, 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 what what uh, this person does is uh, helping them to polish their stories, uh, to have uh, to find their twi their twists of the stories, and to get deep in the story, so they mm -hmm. can tell. Um, exactly what they want. Sometimes they don't find the words, so yeah. And, and then uh, after that, we will be having a performance coach. Uh, and this performance coach is, uh, is gonna be more customized with, mm -hmm. uh, with the, with the, with the um, participants. And some people need more help or uh, than others to perform in public. So, uh, but we hope that they can uh, uh, they can learn the skills uh, uh, and how to perform in public, how to pub do public speaking, mm -hmm. which is very challenging for most of the people. Um, uh, how to use their voice, their tones. Uh, they are different part of the story, and when you use the tone, it becomes more interesting, right? And more engaging for mm -hmm. your audience. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is uh, also your body, m like when when you are in a in a in a stage all by yourself with a microphone. Is yeah, you we tend to be like very you know <laughs> nervous, 
Uh, so we hope like they can relax and be, you know, confident and natural. And yeah, so yeah, they will be having uh, a couple of sessions with this performance coach and prepare all these women to get ready for the big event that we will be um, doing in the Manitoba Museum. Hopefully in March in 2023, uh, 2023. and um, uh, all these women we will be performing and telling their stories on that day, and they will be bringing also uh, a pair of shoes, mm -hmm. and we 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 also want to um, uh, uh, have these shoes with uh, pictures and. Uh, uh, all these things in the, on the stage, so people can see all the work that they have been doing. You know, yeah. I think that's not easy to share your own story with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have like a good mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, I think good mentoring is a vital role in achieving this successful. Yes. Yes. So yeah. who are the mentors in the show projects, and how did you choose them? So, uh, well, the mentor, uh, her name is uh, Pathli Creary. Mm -hmm. uh, she is the owner of um, Untold Stories Studio. She's uh, also an immigrant. Uh, she, uh, she's a native from uh, Jamaica. Uh, she came in 2010 to Winnipeg. Uh, she got her PhD in um, um, peace and conflict, and also a master in politics in the University of Manitoba. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we, uh, we interview many, many um, candidates, but like she's very skilled and she also has been working on this um, uh, studio with a lot of women and how to, 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 to tell their stories. Um, yeah, so yes. Cool. Uh, so the first show project was launched in Toronto in 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, you have been successfully implementing uh, the project for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So how many women have already shared their stories with the show project? So far, um, we have uh, more than 300 stories mm -hmm. um, and all the stories come from all the continents. So yeah, so we will be adding more and more countries this, this time in Winnipeg. Cool. So participation in this shoe project is a great opportunity for every woman. How participation in the shoe project uh, led to a better life changing? Mm -hmm. um, well, this is, this is a little bit related with the expectations that we have mm -hmm. um, and the origin of this project. And so it's, um, I think that if you, as a, as a participant, um, you are able to, to dig deep in your story, able to open to other women, um, then you will be not only healing maybe some part of your story uh, that need to be told, also uh, you will be creating um, a family with these other ladies because all of them, they will be sharing um, moving stories and, 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 and also with a, um, a lot of resilience. Um, so. Yeah, and I think that uh, these two things, and if you are able to grab all the learning from the writing mentor and the performance coach, and all that you wish, like that is shared in those in the, in the, in this group, um, for sure it will be providing you like a lot of movement in yourself, and yeah, and changes, yeah, for the best, <laughs> for cool. the better. Can you share with us one of the most catchy stories of a woman whose results impressed you? Mm -hmm. um, no, I cannot. No. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot because all of them, they have uh, their special story, their spe speci special um, uh, thing to, to share. 
uh, there are challenges like is is completely different one person to another and 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 that's why also it's very difficult to to interview all the candidates and to pick only 12 mm -hmm. you know is is uh, amazing amazing women amazing women okay how confidence can change a woman's life for the better self confidence yes. um I think that self-confidence is, um, is I, 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 I'm going to start like uh, in the opposite way. When you don't have self-confidence, I think it's like uh, walking uh, through life mm -hmm. blind. Yeah. So in this, in this experience, um, like uh, you will be yeah, living different experiences, but scared and um, you don't know if you like you don't know all the time if you will be able to do a uh, certain thing or to overcome some challenges. You know, you don't know. So you are scared and there is a lot of stress um, also related. So self-confidence for me is when you are grounded mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you are not scared or you don't have fears you like you have those but you also have uh, you don't miss the all the skills that you have and you're you're like you are um, the owner of yourself you know you I, I think that that's the, yeah, that's the, be the best way that I can, I can explain. Yeah, what would be your three tips mm. for a woman to improve uh, self-confidence? Um, the first thing is uh, be aware of your um, environment mm -hmm. and where, uh, with the people that you are surrounded. Um, sometimes uh, when you just arrive to a new country, um, you just want to belong somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it might be not the best place for you. So trust yourself, trust your guts. So if you don't feel comfortable, just maybe it's, it's not the best place for you. So that's one thing that I would say uh, is surround yourself with people that is positive, that, uh, that is pushing you for the best, that is uh, always supporting you uh, in the good and the, and, the, and, the, and the bad times. Second thing is take care of your health. It means uh, your body, your mind, and your soul. So exercise, eat healthy, and it doesn't like you don't need to to um, spend a lot of money. You can do it at home. You know, yeah. it's just just self care. You know, just uh, uh, um, spend a little bit of time for yourself. Uh, connect with what you are thinking. You know, you, uh, what uh, what are your you know your fears, and you have the answer of, of everything. Uh, you just have to listen to yourself. Mm -hmm. And and the third third thing, um, I would say, um, no, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best way to improve. Well, no, um, sorry. Uh, I'm going to add, like, um, try to uh, improve yourself um, in, in boundaries mm -hmm. as well. Boundaries is something that we usually forget, uh, especially, especially when you are new and... Like we don't, uh, we tend to say yes, yes, yes to everything. 
And sometimes we, it's good to say no, you know? So boundaries is a, is a good, yeah, it's a very healthy, I think, yeah. Okay, thank you so much for your advices. <laughs> uh, why is it so important to you to amplify the voices of refugee and immigrant women? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. Why is this so important to you to amplify the voices of women, immigrant and refugee? Mm -hmm. um, uh, because the, I think that is a, there is a lot that immigrant and refugee women can bring to this society. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like a, it's, it's, a, it's like a treasure. You know, like, um, and when you when you have the opportunity to know all these women and give them the opportunity to give what they, the best they, they know how to do it, like, there is a win-win, you know, society wins, people around wins, mm -hmm. women wins. And also, uh, it's also bringing awareness about, um, what are the challenges that these women um, are facing, you know, when they, they want to come to any country, either as a refugee or, a, or an immigrant. Refugee is a little bit different story. Um, uh, sometimes we, you as a refugee cannot choose where you are going. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit harder, I think. Okay, mm. so there is a notion that uh, women usually do not work well together. Mm -hmm. So do you agree with this statement? Do you have any challenges uh, <laughs> or difficulties in your women community? No, no. Mm. Um, no, I know that, yeah, there is, uh, there is something like, uh, yes, that, that, that is said that women, like uh, maybe it's because of competition or... Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, not that I am aware of in the in the environment that I am working right now, and uh, I work at at Mosaic mm -hmm. and eighty no ninety five percent of people working at Mosaic is like uh, are women and and like I think it's 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 wonderful to to work with them and. Each woman has their strength and has, has something that they can teach you. And it's just like the way that you, you know, um, give yourself to others, I think. Yeah, and, 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 then like, uh, and also the, maybe the values of the environment are um, promote these things or not. And maybe in, in those places that they are not promoted, the respect, you know, and the, 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 um, the differences as a strength mm -hmm. instead of a challenge, uh, then it doesn't matter if you're a woman, if you're a man, or if you're working with a lot of women. And I, and I think that it has to be with values. And that organization or the place that you are promote those values. Thank you. Let's move to my last question. What would be your advice to refugee and immigrant women who struggle and can't build a successful life, mm -hmm. career in Canada? Um, I, um, I, I would say never give up. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is possible. Um, don't forget your dreams because uh, there is a lot of people, good people working um, for you to have uh, lots of opportunities. You may not meet these people yet uh, and uh, keep going, uh, trust yourself, follow your dreams, uh, yeah, maybe, you know, you have uh, some rocks on the, uh, you know, on your journey, but it doesn't mean that you cannot get to the finish line or your goals or your dreams, you know. Um, 
even in the, the hardest moments when you want to give up and you say, no, I don't want to, to do anything when it's, I don't want to speak English mm -hmm. anymore. I just want to go back to my language. Uh, take a break, but keep going, keep going. This is the, like, this is the only way that you, you know, you are achieve your dreams and it's possible. Like here, like the, I've been, I've seen a lot of uh, different uh, women uh, that they, they have achieved their dreams and like it's a kind of a um, transformation path, amazing. And I am very honored and uh, to, to um, you know, to be witness of these uh, transformations. So yeah, it's possible, it's possible. Thanks for sharing, I can't wait to see the show on okay. March. <laughs> okay, oh, excellent. Thank you so much for having me, Julia. And uh, yeah, looking forward to maybe to come back again and tell you what was the, uh, the you know, the, the, the result of all yes. these works. Okay. We will meet you. <laughs> Thank you. So with that, we are going to conclude today's discussion. Thank you, Geraldine. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Thank you. Thank you for my, my pleasure. And thanks our audience for joining us today. We hope you enjoy it. If you like the episode, please like, share and subscribe to see our upcoming episodes. <laughs>